Colin Braithwaite takes pride in his garden. He only uses the purest water for his plants. A centimeter of rainfall contributes about 600 liters just from the roof of my house alone. So it's a lot of water. So to help conserve all that water, Colin decided to install three rain barrels. This is the big rain barrel at the front of the house. And there's a, a system that allows overflow water to go into the ground through a pipe that I installed over to a dry well. Instead of using tap water from the house to water his plants, Colin tries to rely on rainwater. The other issue on this property is that it's not well drained. The property is, is, is very flat and so a lot of what I do with rain barrels is, is sort of um, an attempt to make sure that my property doesn't flood and that my basement stays dry. Rain barrels are one of the best ways to prevent storm water pollution from getting into our lakes and rivers. They're also one of the best ways to save money and save energy. 33 to 66 percent of a city's electricity use is spent just on treating and pumping tap water. So every time you use rainwater instead of tap water, you're actually saving energy as well. It's something that means a lot to this environmentalist. Water falls and, and we don't maximize the use of it. So really it's just a common sense thing for me. The weather was oddly appropriate this particular weekend. The weather's very fitting. Despite the weather, hundreds of homeowners showed up some waiting in line for half an hour. For what? Rain barrels. We hope they're going to use this rain barrel to reduce their water usage um, inside their house, conserve a little bit of water. By using these rain barrels, it'll also help us with our um, storm management. The idea is catching on. Newmarket and Keswick residents have also cashed in on this money-saving, eco-friendly tool. Environmentally friendly to, uh, to use the rain water to water your uh, your gardens and uh, it also saves on the water bill. <laughs> well I figure if we all do our part we're helping the environment in some way. <laughs> it all started earlier this spring when everyone living in Wingham, Ontario was given their own rain barrel. The pilot program is designed to measure how much water one community can save. In the past three decades insurance claims have increased significantly because of more severe weather. If municipalities use rain barrels, we might be able to reduce the number of flooded basements and we might be able to reduce the amount of uh, water that needs to be treated for municipalities. It means you help your city reduce its energy use and by keeping stormwater on your property, you help keep our lakes and rivers clean. Every time it rains, rainwater hits the road, it hits our roofs and it carries litter and oil and gas and pet waste right into the storm sewer which goes untreated into our rivers and lakes you're also saving money and energy. What it really is about is about changing the way people think. It's about changing the way we use resources. And helping nature one drop at a time. For the weather. When Susan Howard started working on her yard earlier this year, she thought it was important to consider the impact she'd have on the environment. I have a large property that takes a lot of time to maintain. So everything, as I'm thinking about what I'm planting and where I'm putting it, I'm also thinking about how much water it's going to be, require to maintain those plantings. To conserve water and save money, Susan decided to install a rain barrel. We have uh, rain falling from the sky and, and the idea of just capturing it and being able to use it uh, at a later time, it, it just makes sense to me. Okay, Susan, and they're actually down. easy to install. Attach your end under there so it catches okay. the rain. And I'm going to direct the rain into the barrel. Into Excess storm water okay. in the city has nowhere to go. Most of the landscape is impervious surface, meaning that it doesn't absorb anything. So the storms uh, carry this pollution into lakes and rivers, causing water pollution. But by storing water in a rain barrel, it keeps pollutants from entering the lakes. It also saves energy because the water doesn't need to be treated. In the city of Toronto, 57% of the electricity used by the city to run the city is used to treat and pump water. That includes sewage and storm water. Uh, consider how many greenhouse gases could be avoided if we kept that storm water above ground and used it for other purposes. It's a practical thing as well as it, it, it fits with my values, which is very much to conserve water. So this is my uh, river safe rain barrel. 
um, nothing too high tech. It's just a piece by piece. A, a Steve Stockton has been the, uh, naturalizing his soft. property. And, uh, what I did is I just diverted my downspout, which used to feed into the storm sewer, um, so it instead goes into the rain barrel. Toronto gets an average of 695 millimeters of rain every year, so it's no wonder we need to be concerned. So but maybe this, we can all learn by is, example. Is, I've dug a hole, I've lined it with a landscape fabric, and then I've backfilled it with stones. And so what this, this does is it allows water to be diverted into here to collect there and infiltrate slowly into the soil. Over 70% of the City of Toronto is comprised of hard surfaces, so sidewalks, roadways and driveways. After heavy rainfall, stormwater often runs directly from the driveway right into a sewer system like this one. What most people don't realize is this water won't make it to a treatment facility. It'll often end up in our lakes and rivers. Whether it be um, pesticides, which was more in the past than it is now, but fertilizers, uh, pet waste, um, if you're washing your car in your driveway, um, if you've changed oil on your, your car's oil in your driveway and you have drippings, all of that runs off in the rain into a stormwater system. It takes less than half an hour for pollution to travel away from your yard. Experts say small changes can make a big difference. Bringing in native species and more soft surfaces, getting rid of your hard pavement and asphalt and bringing in permeable paving like interlocking bricks that uh, can absorb, you know, allow the infiltration of water between them. All sorts of things that, you know, plague our city are easily augmented if everybody gets together and makes small changes to the way they live. For the Weather Network, I'm Kelly Noseworthy in Toronto. Uh, into this area here, um, where it's taken